Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm going to take a video presentation on microarray of SNP genotypes. Microarray consists of an arrayed series of microscopic spots of DNA which is immobilized on a glass chip. The core principle behind microarray is hybridization between two strands of DNA that is the target DNA and the cDNA or the oligonucleotides. Microarray is used to detect the genetic material synthesized on a glass slide which may or may not be translated into proteins. This is the complete affirmatory gene chip system that includes gene chip fluidic station 450, the barcode reader to read a specific gene chip with the help of computer systems, hybridization OVEN 645 to maintain the gene chip hybridization, the gene chip are placed on a tray which can accommodate 8 at a time. And this is the affirmatory gene chip scanner. The DNA chip of microarray is prepared on a small solid base such as a piece of glass or nylon divided into a grid of tiny squares. To each square is attached a different and specific piece of DNA which is a typically assured DNA sequence that connects with a probe of particular gene. DNA corresponding to thousands of different genes may accommodate on a single array which is bigger than a microscopic slide. The single standard DNA which is a sample of interest is cut up and washed. Any sequence in the sample which matches the sequence in the chip will hybridize and the sample is suitably labeled usually with a fluorescent tag. The matches can be visualized and analyzed by the computer and the expression level of hundreds of different sequences can be studied simultaneously. Single nucleotide polymorphism is defined as a single base change in a DNA sequence that occurs in a significant proportion of a large population. They are the most simple form and most common source of genetic polymorphism in the human genome. SNPs are found by direct sequencing and not by using restriction enzymes. They occur every 300 to 1000 base pair along the 3 billion long human genome. And many SNPs have no effect on cell function. Application of SNP Diagnostic or risk profiling Gene discovery and mapping Association based candidate polymorphism testing Gene function identification Homogeneity testing or study design And response prediction SNP genotyping on microarray SNP genotyping is done to determine the extent of heterozygosity First, the SNPs are selected, design of PCR and tag primers, multiplex PCR, cyclic SBE or ASP with fluorescent DNTPs, capture of products on microarray, and signal measurement with the help of scanner. A haplotype stands for a set of linked SNPs on the same chromosome. We can find three SNPs in these three chromosomes because there are polymorphism in each SNP locus and their corresponding haplotypes are CTC, CAT and ATC. If we only look at the SNP patterns, they are called haplotype. This is the relationship between SNPs and haplotypes. Selecting discriminative SNPs for association study. We wish to identify a set of discriminative SNPs which induces the disease in association study. Zero indicates two major alleles, one indicates two minor alleles, two indicates one major and one minor allele and X indicates the missing data. However, the capability of SNP genotyping array is limited. So we are forced to select a subset of SNPs to be genotyped. Hybridization was performed and the arrays were scanned using affirmatrix scanner and the results were analyzed. SNPs in the human genome. The alleles at SNP1, SNP2, SNP3 
and SNP4 are highly correlated with each other. Some genes show a marked skew in the distribution which is speculated due to natural selection. Genes involved with DNA and RNA metabolism are often within regions of haplotype blocks and genes involved in immune responses and neurophysiological processes are often in the regions of recombination hotspots. Haplotype Blocks and Tag SNPs The SNPs within a haplotype block tend to be inherited together which are not easily separated by recombination. The haplotypes within a block have limited diversity. A small subset of SNPs called tag SNPs is sufficient to distinguish all haplotypes in a block. Distinguishing a haplotype sample using all SNPs. An unknown haplotype sample is added. We can genotype all SNPs to distinguish an unknown haplotype sample. But there are millions of SNPs in the human gene. Examples of tag SNPs. In fact, it is not necessary to genotype all SNPs. SNPs S3, S4 and S5 can form a set of tag SNPs. We can work on a larger set of tag SNPs called robust tag SNPs which is able to tolerate a number of missing data. The missing rates of SNPs in a typical genotyping experiment is usually limited to 10 to 15 percent. Hardness of finding robust tag SNPs. The native approach is testing each combination of SNPs such as 12,1 plus 12,2 till 12,12 12 is equated to 2 to the power 12. The influence of missing data. A SNP is called missing data if it does not pass the threshold of data quality. If S12 is missing, the sample can be identified as P2 or P3 pattern. If S1 is missing, the sample can be identified as P1 or P3 pattern. The relation between SNPs and haplotypes can be formulated as a bipartite graph. S1 can distinguish P1, P3, P1, P4, P2, P3 and P2, P4. S2 can distinguish P1, P4, P2, P4 and P3, P4. There are K by 2 which is equal to K into K minus 1 by 2 pairs of patterns. Therefore, microarrays can be used to detect differences in the levels of gene expression in different populations of cells on a genome-wide level.